This is from Trey Real Stroker Murphy. How does the Pelicans three point defense work? Uh, it can't be just luck that their opponents have consistently the worst three point percentage for two straight seasons. Uh, while, while they also give up the most three point attempts, uh, what's going on? I, I, so, I wrote about this today for something else. I've been listening to a lot of discussions about it. We got to talk about this. Oh, you wrote about it. Did you want to take it then? No, I, I, it's, it's all your notes are very similar. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, the cynic and I am, uh, my kink is not the Pelicans, So I feel like I'm just a little, a little bit more down on them than, than you. Um, and I trust in a lot of smarter people than me who have essentially said, you know, there are some things you can do as a defense to limit three point accuracy of your opponents. One of the main ones being make sure really good shooters do not take those threes. And one of the other ones being try not to allow really wide open threes. The Pelicans, the, the deep dives in the data just suggest that like some of that might be happening. And the two year window where it's this is happening two years in a row now is persuasive just because it grows the size of the sample. So you can't dismiss it as small sample luck as easily. I still think it's mostly luck. I still think if opponents are missing wide open threes more often against you than against any other team, odds are you're lucky. And it's not like you haven't figured out how to play like you don't Willie Green's a good coach. I don't know if he has uh, schooled the team on defensive telepathy. Like, I don't think that's a thing. So part of it, I, 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 I said I wasn't going to take over this thing, but like I think part of it is that maybe some of the numbers we have are not accounting for like the length of the Pelicans roster. Like maybe wide open shots are not as wide open if it's Trey Murphy or Brandon Ingram or Herb Jones closing out against you with like nine foot wingspans. Um, but I, I, I skew more towards the Pelicans have been lucky defensively, and I think their defense will be will regress as as opponents make threes at expected rates. So yeah, the, take so that where you want. If you're looking at three point defense specifically and say they've been lucky, but I think the way that they are able to get set yes. is like a big part of why their defense is maybe overachieved relative to personnel. There's luck involved with the three point. I mean, you mentioned it. Like their opponents are shooting 36% on wide open threes. That's by far and away the lowest mark in the league. You can say they're selective about who gives them up. But when you go back and watch, what I do think you already mentioned the length thing and the contest stuff is right. But there, there are two things that stand out to me is the level of pressure they're able to put on because they navigate screens. And so they're within proximity of these shot takers that they're going to have these where maybe it's classified as open, but because of the wingspans of some of these guys that it's actually not six mm -hmm. plus feet. Um, the other thing for me, only the heat and the bulls are better at forcing opponents to take threes later in the shot clock. So seven seconds or less remaining on the shot clock. Statistically speaking, those shot percentages on average are going to be lower than if they're coming because the reason you're taking shots early in the shot clock is you're open. You got so a good one. Able to, yeah. The Pelicans might give up a lot of wide open threes, but if you're also forcing opponents to defend deep into the shot clock, how many of those threes are grenades to shooters? Mm -hmm. You mentioned this at the top. They're not very good. Um, and so I think that's been a big deal about their defense, which comes back to one getting set. The fact that they're able to fight and you have guys like Herb Jones, you have guys like Trey Murphy, you even have just like, and I think this has been the other thing that I noticed is Brandon Ingram has gotten better defensively. I think he's been smarter with his closeouts. He's been able to shoot better gaps, um, smarter with his help. And I think that's where the Pelicans have, and I did not dig into the data on this. So I didn't look at like what's happening from the corners, but when you look at like what CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram have done as helpers when they are in the corners, and maybe even Zion Williamson at points, they've been able to like pick and choose where they're going to put the ball pressure. And if you trust those guys to close out, or if you're helping off of the right shooters, I think that adds the element of, okay, we're actually helping deflate this three point percentage by design. I say all this knowing we saw it with the Knicks a couple of years ago, that stuff will normalize. There's luck here. There's absolutely luck here, but I don't think like, if you look at the Pelicans defense as a whole, and a lot of what I said applies to, I think their overall defense, because take three point pointers out of the equation. Only the bulls have opponents taking a larger share of their overall shots inside seven seconds of the shot clock. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. I would say. And so it's their ability to get set, which that comes back to their offense, but also just the commitment to getting back in transition, which they've for the most part consistently had under Willie green, all that stuff makes a big difference. And so if you want to say the Pelicans three point defense has been more luck than not, I, I will concede that. Um, but I do think they've done things that go into it as a larger point. I don't think their overall defensive standing 
is completely founded around luck. I know it looks wonky because of the personnel, but I think that they have done things to earn. What are they like sixth right now in points allowed per possession or whatever it is. So that's where I'm at with the Pelicans defense. And it's why, I mean, it's one of the many reasons why they are my kink because even their offensive imperfections or the nights where it's, Look, they're going through a kind of a mini tear right now. They've beat up on some inferior opponents. But like we've seen stretches where those one kind of just deviate from what's working and it doesn't make sense. But you can still almost trust them to refine their peak or to tread water because their defense has been so good. And I think too, like it's kind of ex- exciting to think about because like their process, at least in terms of just the shots they allow, goes against conventional wisdom. Because like in terms of what are the pillars of a good defense typically right now in in the NBA? It's like, don't let opponents shoot threes. Like, just don't do that. Like, that's the Bucks under Budenholzer. Like, that was their whole thing. We funnel everything to the middle. We let the big guys deal with it. Typically, I correct me if I'm wrong, I think just as a broad generalization, the best defense is limit opponent three-point attempt frequency. The Pelicans don't do that. Well, it's, it, it's interesting to think that like conventional wisdom is only right until it isn't. And at some point we could be in a, uh, in an era where like, it's actually okay to let opponents shoot a bunch of threes. As long as you get really good at, you know, contesting and letting the wrong guys, making sure the, the wrong slash right guys are shooting those threes. It's fun to think about the Pelicans maybe being on like the Vanguard of something because it's two years now. So like that has to at least get your attention a little bit. I'm just playing devil's advocate, but well, like that's the interesting side of this to me is that it goes against like normal, good defensive process. Well, I think you're touching on a trend to, I mean, this isn't a, I'm talking about just this season. So if you go through the teams that are the best at limiting opponent three point attempts, I'll read them off to you. I'll read you the top five and you guess how many top 10 defenses are in there. Indiana, Denver, (laughs) Detroit, Washington, Portland, Followed by San Antonio. Interesting, to round out. right? Bad defenses, like pretty much across the board. Denver's for Denver. top 10 ish. Yeah. And Denver is not even in, they're not in the top 10 of defense this year, right? Or you wonder, they? though, is that the defense limiting threes or is that the defense being so bad that teams get all the way to the basket, which is what they want to do anyway? Like, I don't, I, you know what I mean? Like, it can't, it could be that and, too. And look, to be fair, so like Minnesota is seventh, Cleveland is eighth. Uh, or Milwaukee's ninth, Orlando is is tenth, and so it's like okay, like there is some defenses. there is some pretty good defenses there, but it's just funny that of the top five teams, or even top six, just because Portland was so close to being in the top, like they were basically dead even. Of the top six teams that are gr- great at limiting opponent three point attempts, there's one top ten defense, and it's Denver's. Yeah, it, you know what? The unfortunate part about this is what it reveals is that you can't just look at the number and conclude that the Pelicans are a good or bad defense or are lucky because all those teams you just mentioned, like you, you can't, I guess I've just, you have to watch what they do. Like what kinds of threes are, it's like, that just makes it harder to study defenses. And, and, this and happened to me points. earlier in the season where it's of the games I caught. It was like someone had said in our discord, I apologize. I can't remember that CD McComb was having a fantastic defensive season. And you look at some of the counting numbers of what he's doing with seals. It's like, okay, and then I was just like, eh, like I haven't seen it. But then you but go back and you're kind of watching defender. possessions that he's not involved in yeah. directly. And it's, oh, okay. It's like, they are the, that's, that, that was a great way to frame it. It's like, this is the team that you have to watch them to defend, to understand why this is happening beyond luck. But I, I do have to concede just because we've seen it play out. I'm going to default to history with you. I think the three point stuff is probably more lucky than not, but I will say relative to like what the Knicks did, like during mm-hmm. the, the early Tibbs days, it does feel like more than the typical Jedi defense, the Pelicans are doing things to actually affect what's going on here. Yes. I think, I think that's, yeah, I don't think it's all luck. I think it's mostly luck. And I think the part that isn't luck is really worth paying attention to, like how aggressively they rotate and how much they just always have a body at the nail. So you can't drive, you have to swing, swing, swing and hope they fuck up a rotation. And then you get your wide open three. But to your point, maybe that's like eight passes into the possession and the shot clocks at five. And and that's a harder shot. The amount of work it takes to get them in rotation because of the way they're able to navigate screens. Mm Mm-hmm. 